What's up? What's up? LC heads. Uh, somebody did leave me a comment and they were like, counter arc? Like, what the hell? What are you doing? Why aren't you covering this? Um, so the, the short answer is there's so many goddamn collab banners up right now. I forgot which one was which. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm still working on getting that that arc and then later I started thinking about that and I'm like I don't even think that's the arc that I'm talking about I'm like the counter arc uh well it is an arc that I already have it's the other LR arc uh this armory contest arc um a lot of good stuff in here and probably the reason I didn't jump on covering a counter um arc right off rip um well personally in my opinion and this is specifically for me counter has not been that valuable up until now like up until very recently for me um i don't know six months ago something like that you can find old videos of me talking about counter and how um it just wasn't worth it damn it it just was not worth it um Specifically on some heroes where counter ate up so much of their kit, so much of their abilities. Like they're sacrificing so many other good things that they could have from having a shit ton of these counter abilities. Um, and it was also, it was just one of these things where the chance to proc counter is so low. Like I used to have the same complaint about guard chance and... Um, guard being very very low to proc uh, now obviously real tanks they have like a talent or something built in that will increase their guard chance uh, so like they had to do something about that because the average guard and counter rate are just like so freaking low uh, and it's not something that you're really going to be able to pve much with um you're not going to see a proc on the screen a lot. It's not really going to do a lot for you. But now, now in Last Claudia, since they are adding content like Guild Wars and this tower defense stuff, um, now it's becoming advantageous to make a counter build and to actually, you know, invest into that. And we've seen that firsthand with some of the Guild Wars that we've had. Um, me and Big MCC both got stomped out in the same run by a counter, a counter team. Um, I think it was actually Violet. And it was just one of these things where she was built out where she's got a ton of hit points. She has some of it and she has a bunch of counter. Now, your team's going to smash into her and you have four heroes fighting... Uh, this this counter tank chick right well uh now you have a four-on-one situation where all of the heroes are by default doing basic attacks and they're trying to charge their kits well just off of that counter is going to proc and we actually watched violet just destroy whole teams um pretty much counter would probably like, if you get lucky and you proc a few counters off of just basic attacks that really aren't doing shit to you um the whole team can get wiped uh and we you know multiple guild members of mine saw that and we quickly came to the realization that counter teams or counter capabilities are back on the table they are important it is really nice to have something like this uh and obviously this plays right into that skill special counter damage you know plus 23 percent to enemies with same type as unit, um, this is still fine because the majority of heroes are like a soldier type, um, a knight type, something like that. So this is going to be really good for any soldier counter build because he's going to run into the same types as him. So you're going to get all these bonuses. So typically like this counter bonus on a lot of these arcs, it's locked behind some sort of thing you have to fulfill. For instance, the UR arc that we have here, this also has counter damage. When only one weapon is equipped, skill special counter damage plus 28%. And this is a UR arc. 
right? Um, so it's not just going to give you <laughs> counter damage plus, you know, 28% free and clear. It's only going to apply when only one weapon is equipped. So uh, which condition is easier to meet? You know, because um, here's the thing. This, this arc down here, the, uh, the armory contest, this is pretty much uh, unlocking that extra counter damage uh, without having to double hand a weapon. So this is unlocking a counter build for a dual wield character, uh, which is, I think, kind of the whole purpose of this thing. On top of that, um, this thing has, when physically attacked, chance to activate a powerful counter. So this has its own counter chance built in. Right, you're going to be able to proc a counter just off of this arc being equipped, and then chances are, whatever hero you put this on, they're going to have counter on them already, and they have a chance of proccing that, and they might have some gear on them that increase their chance of proccing a counter or increase their counter damage. So, uh, this is another means to a way. This is a way to apply counter damage to uh, a dual wielder. And uh, it's going to work well against uh, types, same types as you, right? So for anybody that's interested in that, uh, this was on the, the collab with Claude. Yeah, obviously Claude's in here fighting. So it's a pretty damn good arc. Uh, what is, that's right, the Eternal... Fear. Yeah, physical attack damage 10%, physical attack damage, or sorry, physical attack damage 10%, physical attack damage plus 15% for the second hit of dual wield skill attacks. Yeah, this is one of the best uh, dual wield swords in the game, IMO. Just giving you that extra 15% for your second hit. It is a fire sword. Um, might actually have to farm that one out, right? So, you know, more than one reason to want this arc. Um, you, you, you can obviously use it for the counter build possibilities that are on it and to have a dual wield character that has a counter build that's going to work hella crazy good, I'm sure, All right? Um, it's going to work really well with Claude. Um, and it's giving you access to, you know, a really powerful sword that's going to be really good for a dual wielder. So, uh, not to mention we have Soldier Buster on here. And one battle to decide it all. So, physical attack damage minus 15% from enemies with the same type as unit. So, um, this is just giving a lot of power to soldier types that are going to be fighting other soldier types because they're so common. Right? And soldier buster is just awesome to have. Uh, we have counter boost too here. Counter damage 50%. Counter damage cap another 5,000. And we have counter, of course, when physically attacked, chance to activate a powerful counter right so yeah uh the lr counter arc is here folks uh you know if this is something that you're interested in um yeah it's definitely gonna be worthwhile having for at least dual wield counter builds All right let's see so either way even if you're not getting the counter damage right because you are not uh, attacking enemies with the same type, you still have an extra chance to proc a powerful counter. So this is still going to be worth having, right? Because even if you're fighting a whole team of god types and you're a soldier type, okay, you're not going to get your 23% more damage to counter, but you still have a chance here to do a very powerful counter every time you're hit with a physical attack. So, uh, and on top of that, like when counter is active, damage taken minus 30%. When physically attacking, boost damage based on closeness to the enemy, max 20%. And cub physical damage based on closeness to the enemy, minus 20%. Whole lot of good stuff there, even if you're not using the skill special counter damage plus 23% to enemies with the same type. Like, that's just an extra bonus if you can match your type up. Even if that's not your type... These are a hell of a lot of awesome arc trait bonuses in here. So this thing gets gets a S plus stamp from me. This thing is pretty awesome, specifically for the dual wheel counter thing that you're gonna be trying to do. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on the flip side later, everybody.